Welcome to part three of our kind of Tesla supercharger. Lots of road. I love Blue Cruise, by the way, because I could just sit here and talk to you and uh, do whatever, you know, play some game, drink some Dr. Pepper. Uh, no product placement at all there. Anyways, so this is uh, technically part three. In part one, we drove from Colorado all the way to Flagstaff, Arizona. And in part two, we drove around Flagstaff a little bit. We went down to Sedona, Arizona. We went to the Grand Canyon. Yeah, we just had lots of fun around there. And that was to show you what it's like using the chargers at the hotel on our trip, which is what you're supposed to do. And now we're going from Flagstaff. We're going to go all the way to Texas. It's like 800 and something all the way to Fort Worth, Texas, 800 and something miles. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, so we're starting that out. But if you look over here, I can show you a couple things that I'm advising y'all to do. Watch the road. Okay. So right now it is 100%. We got that up at the hotel. But this is only saying 301 miles. It's not going to be bad because we have about 240 miles or so uh, to get to the next charger. And then if you look over here on the map, you'll actually see. 233 miles to get to the next charger and I'm using Google Maps right now instead of Apple Maps and I'll show you and I'll tell you why actually there's a really really good reason so since I'm only doing Tesla superchargers the best way to do that is to look those up on the Tesla app and they'll tell you which ones are you can use the adapter with so uh, so you actually find the ones that you can use the adapter with. And then what I did is I just looked up that actual Tesla supercharger on Google, created a whole trip on my own. And then you may say, why did you do that manually? Why didn't you use something like Apple Maps or uh, ABRP? So ABRP is an app that a lot of people use, a better road trip planner. Well, I had a bad experience with the ABRP on one of my earlier videos. You can actually see that on my last summer road trip. They actually guided me to a charger that was actually shut down. And I didn't know that I was supposed to verify all the chargers, all that kind of stuff. Well, ABRP, Apple Maps, all of them, what they do is they are finding what they believe is the best charger for you. But if you look, if you watch my very first video of this trip going from Colorado down to uh, Flagstaff, the second ch charging stop, they were trying to get me to go to an EV Go charger when there was a Tesla one that was a little bit, f that was faster, not maybe a mile away. So the algorithm isn't there yet where they are programming faster chargers. They're programming the priority in the algorithm to actually go to a faster charger first. So some of you may say they do that, but they haven't for me. So since I was limiting it just to Tesla superchargers, I programmed it myself where I said, okay, I wanna go this far, then this far, then this far, and man, it's actually gonna work out great. And there's actually, I even programmed in an extra Tesla supercharging. So I may only stop for maybe 10 or 15 minutes on one of them get a boost and then get going so anyways that's what we're gonna do we're excited but today be on the lookout one of our stops here we're gonna actually do something fun i'm gonna show you things that you can actually do while you're stopped waiting for it to charge so anyways it, that'll be awesome so let's get going down the road still at 100 percent by the way this whole time we've been doing this video and uh this trip now has okay i'm watching the road we have eight miles on this trip so far so yeah this is interesting 100 percent uh i'll take that i just thought it was really cool uh i started getting behind this uh diesel uh this semi truck here and not really on purpose it was just the way uh the way that it happened and then we just got to talking and i didn't realize it you know uh but we're basically still been behind him. He's going anywhere from about 64 to 70 miles an hour. So we may get around him here in a minute in order to speed up. But 
basically, I just thought it was interesting. If you look over here, it just went down to 99% as soon as it hit 17 miles. We went we went a whole like 16 plus miles on 100%. But I think following this truck has actually gotten us some pretty good range so far. So I'm wondering how long I actually do this and uh, see if we can, uh, we can get even better range. And we're not that close to it. We're actually, I love Blue Cruise because we can set how close uh, we are to the vehicle in front of us. So we're about three out of four. Uh, there, you have four different options that you can click on here, and we're about three out of four of those. There's a chance if we do this, we may be able to skip one of our supercharger stops. So, anyways, just thought I'd point that out. That I know most of y'all know that drafting a, a, a semi actually does get you more fuel efficiency, all that kind of stuff. But um, I didn't realize it was it helped this much just being in the ev too so anyways there you go all right see you at the next stop All right, we are in Milan, uh, New Mexico, actually. You know, every every Tesla supercharger station setup is, is different. But if you look here, almost every single one of these Tesla things are put in horizontally where we could just, we just backed right in. And yeah, it was really cool. So there's about equal amount on the other side, but I just wanted to tell you we were getting 2.2 miles per kilowatt hour on that part of the trip, and we drove 235.9 miles. And again, some of some of you that don't like EVs have uh, complained a lot about it. Basically, oh, you're gonna have to stop too much, man. We were hungry, and uh, you know it was actually a nice break because we got stuck in traffic. So. Really, uh, it took us about four and a half hours to get here because of, because of the traffic. So uh, we were almost stopped for basically like an hour, almost an hour and a half. Um, but we were hungry, so this barely gave us enough time to go eat and go grab, uh, go to the bathroom <laughs> and get back out to the car before it's back at 90%. So we're gonna get on the road. We're only charged up to 90%. Yeah, it only took about 45 minutes for us to charge here. And uh, that's not bad. We actually, but it gave us, like I said, it gave us enough time to eat and go to the bathroom and get back out here. So now we're gonna get on the road and we will see you at the next stop. All right, guys, I am in Tucumcari, New Mexico, and uh, I am actually at an Electrify America charger. So I'll explain why in just a minute, but I wanted to show you before I actually get started how you do an Electrify America charger. So basically you find the, the charger near you, then you scroll up and you find out, you look on the number, and you find us, so it's very similar to Tesla. You look on the number and you find out which one has availability and which one you're at. We are at number one here. I was parked at number three, but number three says this charger has reduced power. That means they've had an issue with this charger, even though it says up to 350, it's actually not gonna be that fast. So we're gonna go ahead and go with this number one. So basically all you do is you click on that and then you swipe to charge and it will initiate charging and you just go over there and you plug it in and that's it. Okay, so now you're probably wondering, now that we got charging, <laughs> why am I charging at an Electrify America charger on my Tesla supercharger only road trip? Well, it's because of 
what I explained to y'all before about making sure that you plan. Make sure you plan out your trip. I Googled, I set up um, all of the chargers, where I'm gonna stop, everything like that. But I'm in Tucumcari, and Tucumcari chargers apparently are uh, version two chargers on the Tesla supercharger thing. And the adapters only work with version three and version four. So uh, basically I had to come to a backup place. I looked around, I tried to see if there was another uh, Tesla supercharger that we could make it to. The closest one is an Amarillo and that's still about a hundred and so miles away, but I was at 19% uh, on my battery. So I'm really glad that I topped it off in Albuquerque because and uh, I didn't actually record a video there. I just stopped really quick and, and topped it off because I would have actually gotten here at Tucumcari on fumes. And wouldn't that be weird to get here and then you find out that the actual charger doesn't actually work. That would have been crazy. Anyways, this here is only 150 kilowatts is what the speed is at. But right now it's only charging at 125. The uh, Tesla ones normally charge at 170 something. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get it enough to where we can make it the 150 miles to uh, Amarillo and then we'll uh, top it off there on at a, uh, at a Tesla supercharger. So again, make sure when you're planning it out that you pick Tesla superchargers that also have Electrify America uh chargers nearby or in the same town or something like that which is what the case is on this and i also have an electrify america membership and that actually uh, i think they call it some kind of pass or something like that so i have the tesla one and the electrify america one and so you can start those at the beginning of a month where you might be going on a trip and then cancel them after you're done uh it actually works pretty well that way so anyways we're just going to finish uh charging up here and uh, I just wanted to let you know that uh, Tesla superchargers, uh, they are everywhere, but make sure that you use a version three and plan it out properly and don't do what I did and uh, pick a version two for one of your main stops. <laughs> thought I'd leave my little mark on the on the Cadillac and if you can read it it says lightning Mike it was really windy so the the colors are kind of all over the place all right guys we are at our next Tesla charger here and uh, and I told you I was gonna have a surprise for you at one of these stops so here it is adapters going everything's charging and it's almost filled up but I was going to show you what you can do while you're waiting at a Tesla to charge your vehicle. Come on. Look. You can tailgate. Got our little TV hooked up here. And not to be outdone, we got our little microwave. Which is, we bought a new microwave and it's locked. So we got to unlock it. Hold on. To deactivate child safety lock, press zero unlock pad for three seconds press seven nine okay have popcorn Woohoo! yes i did pop this right here oh my gosh buttery popcorn so you can sit so you can sit back watch your favorite lightning mic videos
right here, tailgating. Ah, the sun's in my eyes. Anyways, we'll pick those up. Don't let her. But I just think it's super cool that the Pro Power Onboard is amazing. And if you look, there's only like 1,700 watts that it's pulling. A little bit more than 1,700 watts. I'll show you a, I'll show you a screenshot here, and that means I can pull a whole lot more. But I got the TV running, I got this running. I can actually probably run a whole sound system out here, multiple televisions. It is just, it is just awesome. This whole, this whole thing. So if you ever wondered what you can do while you're waiting for it to charge. Make yourself some popcorn. Yes, I will probably keep that microwave back in the back of the truck. See you on the next stop. <laughs>